Welcome everyone. You are in yoga. We'd like to begin um, first making sure you have maybe some of the tools, some of the props you might need. So um, two blocks today. If you can use, if you don't have blocks, maybe have um, a blanket, two blankets or two pillows, or even if you have maybe two boxes that might are sturdy, you can use boxes, or even um, if you still have those old-fashioned phone books, the nice big ones, those will work too. So again, welcome, I'm Angie, and here in Hampton Roads, beautiful day, all of those members from Prime Plus and uh, my colony, Hello to you all, and um, for anyone new, welcome. Again, so yin yoga, yin yoga is considered a cold yoga. It's stretching all on the floor. We don't get up out, um, in a standing position. All of the poses are done on a mat, on the floor, you are seated or laying down, either in a prone or a supine position. So on your back or your, or your belly. And um, the poses are held for about two to five minutes, depending on how much you've had uh, stretched, what your tension is, how you're feeling today. Uh, knowing this is yoga, this is your practice. You do what you can do. You accept where you are. You live every moment and accept that. Every breath is a gift. Right? With that knowledge, we breathe through every pose. We flow with the breath. We don't stop the breath. If you find that the breath is being held, you're in a pose that the tension is really kind of high and you haven't let, you know, backed off a bit and you're holding the breath, your, your body's telling you, take a break, back off, modify, come out of that tense, that really tense position and ease up on it a bit. So, um, and yin, yoga, any, anything actually, it's really what you choose to do with it. So really what's important is to be able to focus on your breath, on your mind, on your body, and the body communicates to you what it needs. So we must be able to listen to it. All right, so we will begin in a, in a comfortable seated position. So if you had a chance to get a strap or two blocks, sorry, I, I think I forgot to mention, a strap, you can use a belt, uh, you can also use uh, one of those resistance bands. Sometimes if you've had PT, they'll give you a resistance band or you just bought one from the, the store. Uh, so it's good to have that. It's always good to also have maybe an extra blanket. So if you need padding for the knees or for the elbows or even for the wrists. Um, we're going to be doing frog today. It's on my list of things to do. That can be tough on the knees. I'll show you modification on your back and happy baby. You can do that instead of frog. Um, but if you're going to be on frog, you can always have extra padding. Um, I like to sometimes use knee pads. So if you have knee pads, you can always have knee pads next to you. Um, for any poses that are on the knees, we'll be doing praying mantis, which is on the knees. So if you have any sort of sensitivity in knees, it's good to have some of these props. Um, because the point is not to feel pain. Uh, we're supposed to um, feel, yes, uncomfortable through the tension and the stretching that we do, but there shouldn't be any pain. Uh, pain is your body communicating that you need to back off. So remember that. Remember to listen to that. And we're not putting ourselves into positions where um, you want to cause pain. So make sure that you're comfortable. So that if you're on something really hard and pressure on the knees, is, it makes it even more sensitive, put a cushion underneath the knees or the elbows or the wrists. And I'll try and adjust, or I'll, I'll try and vocalize any of this and remind you to uh, put that extra cushion underneath the elbows or the wrists or the knees. Um, and, and just be mindful, all right? So finding a comfortable seated position, using a block, if you're coming into easy pose, or even if you're not, even if you're coming into uh, a kneeling position, you can use this block to sit on. And then when you do this, um, you may find that this relieves some tension on knees if you choose to sit this way or relieve tension 
on the on the ankles region or the top of the foot rather than coming all the way down and putting more pressure on these elbows. Also, if you choose to sit in easy pose, I like to sit on a block as well with this because it helps to open up the hip flexor region. So this region right here where we do a lot of sitting and the knees are up a lot because of the position, we're coming forward or maybe at a computer. And so you start to shorten the, the length of the muscles that run from the femur up through to the lower lumbar. You have lots of muscles there and they start to shorten and therefore start to bring the back forward. So you start to hunch over. And because of that, you also start to feel maybe some uh, pain in the lower back because of the shortening of these muscles, um, the hip flexor muscles. So I like to, when we position ourselves, to sit comfortably onto a block or a pillow, any sort of bolster, a yoga bolster if you have those, and begin to drop the knees down. This really helps to open up um, this region. It starts to lengthen those muscles as we sit. It also helps sometimes to let you sit a little bit taller lengthening the spine, finding that neutral position of the hips. So both of your sit bones should be on a block or two if you need two blocks. Sitting up high and just think about allowing those knees to drop. Use your breath even as you get yourself situated in your seated position. So allow those knees to drop and then begin to lift up through the abdominal region, reaching up with the heart, lifting top of the head lifting, noticing that natural curve of your lower back, noticing the position of the pelvis. Is it forward or can you bring it back to more neutral position or are you naturally back? You feel more of a flattening of the lower back. So lifting up, finding that neutral position, the tailbone gently swaying down towards the floor. Look, gentle, natural curve of your lower back, shoulders are back. The neck is in line with the spine. Maybe the chin needs to come back, bringing that chin back. Feel the chest rise as you do this. So as you slowly bring the jawline slightly back, you'll feel immediately almost the heart lift that you're set right there. Once that heart starts to lift, the top of the head is reaching up. So now that your head is balanced over the body, now you feel more supported in the head. You feel less pressure on your upper back and neck region. Again, the shoulders are back. And inhaling, feeling the length. Exhaling as much air as you can. Feeling that belly button pressing back. Pushing the air out of the lungs by the diaphragm. Feel the body begin to relax gently on the exhale. Inhaling tall. Exhale, begin to drop the shoulders, pressing the belly button back again. Find the eyes, begin to close gently. Allow the hands to just lay on the lap, either palms up. I like to think of it as receiving the energy, accepting where I am. Or if you prefer, palms down. Becoming more internal, centering the mind. Deep breath in, exhale slowly as much as you can, all the old stagnant air out, feeling that belly press back and the shoulders drop as the lungs begin to empty. Lifting, filling the lungs. little bit longer on the exhale, trying to get all that old air out. Begin to lift the tongue inside of the mouth and reach the tip towards the front upper palate. It's just behind the front teeth. Notice how the throat is feeling, the larynx and slowly begin to slide the tip of the tongue on the palate towards the back of the throat. 
Notice the change in volume and sound as the breath. Notice the feel of the cool air pressing towards the back of the throat. Listening to the breath as you press the tip of the tongue back, noticing maybe a slightly higher pitch of sound. Notice your focus on the breath is more intense. Directing your mind inward. Focusing on the breath. is the most important part of any yoga practice. You must be able to breathe with ease, effortlessly through each of the poses. Take it slower if you need to. Inhale, arms come up, reaching up, lifting up. Eyes are still gently gazing down or closed. Exhale, hands come down, palms are facing down. Really extend, shoulders come away from the ears. Pressing the fingertips to the floor, extend the feet one at a time. Then coming off of your block. We're going to set the blocks up, both blocks if you have, or pillows. We're going to bring one block so that it is in line with the mat, parallel with the mat. Then we're going to bring the other one so that it is perpendicular and slightly higher. So you'll see I'm on the lowest level with this one. And then the one for the head will be slightly higher. We're coming into heart bench. This opens up and supports the heart. You're going to slowly begin to recline onto the block. The block should reach starting the bottom of the block reaches about where the bra line is for women, kind of like where the um, bottom of the shoulder blades are, that region. And it supports right along the spine. So adjusting as you need to. And then slowly, once you find that spot where you feel the support all the way up through to the base of the shoulders, then allow the head to drop down. And the back of the head gently rests onto the block. Adjust the block for the head as you need to. The chin is slightly down towards the heart. The legs can be straight. If you need to place a blanket under the knees for some any sort of discomfort you might feel for the lower back, please do. That really helps to lift the knees. You can even just bring the knees up if you're feeling a lot of pressure in the lower back and bring those knees together, feet are out slightly, and just feel the discomfort relieve 
from any lower back issues or stress. You can also, if you're feeling fine in the lower back, bring your feet in bound angle and allow the legs to just drop out. This opens up your hips, the inner groin region. Arms will come out into a T, opening up the chest completely. Deep breath in and exhale. So wherever your legs need to be, adjust as you need to. We're going to stay in this for a couple of minutes. If you feel a little bit more comfortable with the shoulders and arms reaching and coming into like a goal post or goddess hands or arms, so the arms that begin to bend at the elbow and reach out. This opens up a little bit more through the shoulder. Again, any issues or tenderness with the shoulder, the arms can come out. And you're welcome to bring them down if it's too much. And focus on the breath. Maybe focus on your ujjayi breathing, which is what we were doing with the tongue up towards the palate and then reaching that tongue, sliding it towards the throat. This really helps to focus the mind on the breath, decreasing distractions from anything outside of the, your room or your house. Allow yourself to completely surrender into the blocks, feeling the spine, the ribs around the spine completely supported by your blocks, feeling the back of the head completely supported, adjusting anything you might need. About two minutes. Surrender the elbows, surrender the knuckles to the mat, to the floor, to the earth. Surrender the legs, the feet. See if with the next exhale you, re you can relax the lower spine, the lower lumbar, the tailbone, the glutes. About 30 more seconds. Slowly begin to maybe reach those arms up, walking the hands spiders on reverse, reaching up. Again, listen to the shoulders. If it's too much, keep the arms down by the side or in a T and reaching back. Maybe grabbing on to the opposite elbows. And to begin with, to place the forearms onto the forehead. If this feels comfortable, not feeling too much tension, and maybe on the next exhale, dropping the forearms down towards the crown of the head. Starting to feel a little bit more of a stretch through the arms. Preparing for some of the next poses we're coming into, opening up the shoulders. We're going to be working a lot on shoulders, upper body stretches today. Always touching on the whole body, but the first few will be upper arms. On the next exhale, maybe allowing those arms to surrender towards the floor, dropping down. 
Keep breathing. Try not to hold the breath here. Adjust the legs as you need to. Focus on the breath. 30 more seconds. Exhale, slowly begin to open up the arms out to the side and into a T, walking it down, breathe. Bring the hands down by the side, bending the elbows slightly, bringing palms down, really begin to press those elbows into the floor, bending the knees. We're going to slowly drop the knees down, say to the right, begin to press more onto the right elbow, Begin to slowly come out of your heart bench. That was called heart bench. Lifting up slowly, walking the hands towards your body. Chin is still down. Last thing up will be your chin. Take your time, deep breath in. Breathe. And I just have a timer so I know at what point we change so I don't keep you in something too long. We're going to come into a tabletop. We're going to bring both blocks in front of our fingers. All right. Again, you can use your blanket or your um, nicely folded blanket so that they're even or your uh, pillows if they're nice and sturdy pillows. Good sturdy pillows are good. Um, Yoga block, yoga blocks, obviously, or your yoga bolsters are excellent. Now find a gentle tabletop and slowly engage your belly button. Just a nice strong core here. And then slowly what we're going to do is just going to come up into our cat and into cow. Come to neutral on your inhale. Exhale into cow, slowly dropping the belly, but really pressing the fingers knuckles into the mat, lifting up the heart, coming into neutral on your inhale, exhaling into cat, just warming up the spine, adjusting and realigning it after our heart bench. Use your breath, inhale to neutral, exhale into cat, inhale to neutral, exhale to cat, excuse me, it was cow before, deep breath in, and back to neutral. We're going to bring an elbow right to the middle of that block. Breathe. All right, and we're going to begin to press the tailbone up towards the ceiling. Hands are forward right now, center. Really important to try and keep a, your elbow centered to your block because as we come back, you're going to press down head is going to come through the arms. So adjust as you need to. Don't be afraid to even move the knees. All right, and really press back. The heart begins to drop to the floor. So drop that heart completely opposite of our heart bench. This is our counter pose here. Dropping it down. Breathe. Allow even the head to relax maybe towards the floor. Maybe resting on the floor. And you're feeling this stretch here through the shoulders. Now the palms are in prayer right now. And we're going to begin to bring those palms up. And again, you can stay right here. You can even have the arms apart. Adjust as you need to. But if you can, maybe you'll bring those palms up. And then the fingertips will come around and reach for the tailbone. Breathe. Holding this here for about two minutes. I've got my timer set. Breathe through the tension, never holding the breath, knowing if you are holding the breath, you are to back off, to come up, to adjust. Again, you can always have cushions under the knees. If you're really sensitive in the knees or the location 
towards really poor where you're at, so you may be right on tile if you don't have a mat. One more minute. See if you can relax the shoulders, relax the heart to the floor. Relax the face. Deep breath in. Begin to bring the hands forward, reaching fingertips to the front wall. Slowly inhale, pressing the elbows and coming forward with the heart. Heart lifting slowly, maybe bringing one hand to the mats or to the block, lifting the other hand, reaching up, slowly pressing back into a child's pose. Again, you can use a block between the legs for your child's pose. If your hips won't reach towards the heels, you can use the other block for the forehead. If the forehead doesn't reach the floor, extend the arms and extend the child's pose. Breathe and really stretch through the arms. Extend, look up at the fingers and extend the fingers just a little bit more. Exhale, bring the head down. into a prone position for folded wings. Again, this is a stretch for the shoulders. Do what you can do. Maybe have a pillow, a blanket, or your, or your block in front of you. So prone position will be on the bellies. Nice deep breath in. The arms will come out into a T to begin with. Just notice how the shoulders are feeling. The belly is gently moving with the breath. The hips are surrendering into the mat. And slowly begin to walk the hands up, kind of like Superman, reaching forward. And then slowly begin to walk the hands towards each other crossing the right hand over the right of uh, the left hand and the right wrist over the left wrist. Maybe this is it for you. Maybe you're feeling way more tension than you want and you need to back off and bring the arms further apart. If you're not feeling too much tension in your shoulders, in your neck, maybe walk the hands further apart, bringing right forearm over left forearm. If you're fine here, elbows cross. And again, continue if you'd like to walk. Maybe the hands come over the sides of the mat. Maybe they reach underneath you. You have to lift the head. Nice deep breaths in. And whenever you found that spot, just relax the head. 
can always place a block at the fore of where the forehead is for support if that's something that you feel you might need. Otherwise, relax the neck. And if your arms are underneath you, you'll feel just gentle constriction um, of the chest, but the opening of the shoulder blades, opening of the back. The eyes look straight down, closing them if you'd like, so that you have good alignment of spine. All right, so try not looking to the side, one way or the other. You can just release tension by moving side to side. And then once you have, then begin to come into good spinal alignment, relaxing the chin wherever you can and allowing yourself to relax here. See if you can relax from the feet up to the quadriceps. Relax the glutes and the hips. Surrender them into the floor. Relax the shoulders. Relax the fingers. Exhale and relax the face, the eyes, the lips, the tongue. And focus on your breath. About a minute left. out of this anytime you need to. You can even adjust and move in to more of a stretch or out of the stretch if the tension is just too uncomfortable. Think of each breath as a gift in another moment where you find that special idea, that special, that, that moment that is so special, each moment that adds up to so many special moments. Inhale, begin to lift the chin. Begin to slowly walk the hands back up. Maybe the right arm goes a little bit further than the left arm reaches up and reach out and to the sides into a T. Slowly rotate the palms so that they're facing up. Elbows are reaching around. Bring the palms down to the floor and then reverse the rotation so that the palms are trying to reach up. Thumbs are reaching up. Breathe. And palms come back down. Bring the elbows, the hands down towards the thighs, reaching back. Breathe. And again, moving the palms down and up. Rotating the humerus bone, that upper bone that attaches to the scapula, to your shoulder blades. And just allowing a movement there, opening the connective tissue, just noticing if you feel a little bit more free in this region. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Deep breath and lift up into your tabletop. Pressing back. One last stretch through the arms, head comes through. Adjust anything you need to, blocks underneath the hips, the head, even a blanket underneath or right behind the knees helps to um, reduce tension if you might be feeling it in the thighs or the knees. 
Hips move side to side. Walk the hands to the upper right corner of your mat. Bring the head between the forearms, the upper arms, I mean. Give a gentle stretch here through the side, through that side shoulder and the ribs. Walk your hands back and then move the hands to the upper left corner of your mat. Give a gentle stretch here through the armpit, through the rib of the, left, of the right side. Inhale back to center. Nice deep breath in and lift the up. We're going to turn so that if you're not already there and you're on your center of your mat and the length of the mat is on either side, we're going to begin to roll the mats up. All right, and here's where we're going to be padding the knees. So if you need that, those knee pads on top of it all, that might be good. And so we're going to bring and roll up your mat. You can use a blanket if you don't have a mat. So if you have those two blankets, use those two blankets. Nice and long and really well padded. Because we're going to come up into a sort of modified tabletop. Arms and upper torso is lifted. Hips are lifted, just like so. All right, side view. And we're going to bring one knee to the upper part, all right, so that the foot is still on that rolled up mat, if you are using the mat. And then we're going to bring the other knee, and we're opening up nice and wide here between the legs. And you open up as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. So listen to your body. All right, so my foot, let me adjust this so you can see a little bit more the side view here. And we're going to bring that leg, lower leg is on top. I like to have it on top, adjust as you need to though. And I like to keep a, a nice right angle with the foot. This helps protect the knee further. Again, issues with the knee, and if you're feeling a lot of pressure on your knee that you think you shouldn't have, then um, come into happy baby. So for those of you, I'll do just a quick, for those of you who need happy baby, I'll just show you quickly. This is again, a nice opener for the inner groin and you come onto your backs, you bring your hands in between, you either grab onto the shin, the foot, or inner foot, and bring that foot up. And you just hold it here, do what you can. So if you need to hold here, if you can only reach the shins, all right, and nice and open. So we're opening up nice and wide, bringing the knee into your armpit. All right, for those in frog, have a block in front of you. All right, find. Now that you've had time to adjust, move, widen, narrow, position that foot or leg onto that padded section of your mat. And we're going to just come forward, like as if you're in tabletop, the difference is the position of the legs wider and lower leg laying flat onto the mat. And we're going to begin to press the tailbone back. All right, not down, but just straight back. All right, and slowly it comes down and you start to feel a little bit more pressure on the inner groin muscle as you begin to bring the tailbone down and back towards the heels. Kind of like a child's pose, but the legs are positioned completely different. And then you can have a block. Now the block can help support you. So if you find, ooh, you're not going any further right now, you want some support, bring that uh, block maybe underneath you, supporting the ribs. And here you can relax. And if you don't like it there, if it's bothering your breath, then just allow the head to relax as you come back. All right. If at any point you need some major adjustments, you can, you can. If you find you want to widen it, come a little wider, get deeper into the stretch as you press back. Breathe, holding it here. Two minutes, we're gonna hold this. Anytime you need to come out, please do. Breathe, if you're a happy baby, you can even begin to extend the legs and widen them into a V and opens up even more the groin region. And with each breath, 
maybe finding your edge, finding where you can go a little deeper, really opening up your inner groin muscles, inner thigh muscle, breathe. Maybe you can relax the shoulders. Again, use that block to your advantage. Oh, if you find, oh, you really don't want to go any further, and this block kind of, it stops you from going any further. It's just holding you there. If you're not using the block, then you feel that subtle movement where you maybe find the edge and then you're like, oh, maybe not, and then come back up and then reach back down and find that you've loosened up and you can go. So listen to the body. Know where you need to be. Maybe find that edge. Listen to it. Say, okay, this is it. I'm going to use a block now. You can even place that block underneath your hips. And if you find that the block is that that right point for you, then breathe. Thirty more seconds. One student who loves this pose, so I'm thinking of him, Ray. Ray loves frog. Maybe he's doing it with us today. Deep breath in. Slowly begin to press the weight onto the forearms. Begin to come forward with the hips. Head reaches forward. Now the hands begin to support the torso, lifting up. Come forward. Reaching forward, lengthening through the legs. Deep breath in. And then slowly start to walk one knee and then the other. Take your time, use your breath. Deep inhale, lifting up, reaching up, high knees here. Hands come to your back. Really squeeze the glutes for a second and lift. Nice long stretch. Don't worry, we'll do a counter pose for this in the next move. First, we're going to work a little bit more in that inner groin before we do our counter pose. All right, and we're going to come into a seated position. We're going to come into butterfly or bound angle. A lot of people really like to use a block for bound angle. Again, the same idea it helps to bring the knees down, helps to open up the hip flexors a little bit more. Even those that are really flexible will find this a really good aid to open up even more. So, bound angle, the base of the foot is together. The knees are out to the side. You can, you don't have to, you can use a blanket or a pillow if you want to sit on something. You don't have to though. If you find that you're really flexible and this is really not a problem. So if you do have that extra block, put it in front of you. Sitting up tall, both sit bones should be on that block or bolster. All right. If not, then maybe use two blocks or just sit on a blanket. Deep breath in, sitting up tall, remembering that posture we had to begin with, with the gentle curve of the lower back, the pelvis right now in a neutral position. Shoulders are up and back, deep breath in. We're gonna hinge at the hip, not at the waist or the ribs, but right at the hips. And we're gonna come forward, shoulder blades are still back towards each other. Coming forward now, the block comes into use. And exhale, maybe find the spot. Just take a breath here. Focus on the breath. Notice the subtleties of the stretch, the movement. We're going for two minutes. Maybe on the next exhale, use your breath always. Coming down to the next lower position. And breathe. Again.
again, finding your edge, but use the breath to help find it. Use the exhale to relax through and know that when you cannot relax, maybe come up so that you can relax into it and slowly allow the connective tissue, the muscles to stretch slowly with ease. And breathe, maybe finding you can go a little lower. Again, use the exhale to come down. Breathing deeply. Allowing yourself to surrender. But knowing when you can use the props, you can always use a blanket underneath the knees if you're like, this is it. Not going any lower. Forty seconds. Relax the hands, relax the face, the neck, the shoulders. Slowly begin to press up to the next higher level of your block. Slowly hinging up, lifting the heart, the head, slowly. Inhaling, lengthening the spine. Exhaling, slowly coming up to the next level of block, wherever you're at. Just take your time and use your breath. Nice, deep breath in. until you're up nice and tall. Begin to bring slowly the knees in. Breathe. Extending one leg. Ooh, feeling maybe the stretch through the upper quad. Maybe coming off of that block now. And stretching both legs out. Pressing the hands behind you. Fingertips pointing towards your toes and slowly lift the heart, point the toes, breathe, maybe lifting up the hips, maybe not, and coming down. Reaching the knees or pressing up, feet to the floor, windshield wiper, just opening up here, releasing any tension you might be feeling, breathe. And sitting up tall, we're going to come into our supported bridge. So have a block or two next to your hips. And we're going to slowly come onto our backs. I'm going to see my timer. And Extend completely. Nice, long stretch. Breathe. Press the heels away one at a time. Really feel that opening through each side of the body. And extend the arms down by the side. Press the feet to the floor, bending the knees. Knees are hip width apart. Knees are in line with the second and third toes. And bring the heels in so that the heels are underneath the knees. All right, so they come in quite a bit. Fingertips might be an inch away. Depends on the, on the length of your arm and the length of your torso. So remember, you know, everyone is so different. Each side of us is so different. So deep breath in. Have that block so that you can have it right next to you, and we're going to slowly come up, but first, with, with the, the alignment I just said, knees about hip-width apart, press
Press the belly button to the floor, tailbone reaches towards the sky. Now we're going to slowly lift the tailbone off the mat. Glutes are engaging, quadriceps are engaging, knees stay in line, and lift up one vertebrae at a time, nice and high, slowly, until you feel most pressure is on the shoulders. And then exhale, slowly one vertebrae at a time down. Now we're gonna find that block. We're gonna place it as we come up underneath the tailbone, underneath the sacrum. So again, begin to engage your belly button. Glutes engage, quads engage. Lift the sacrum, the tailbone, reaching up. Maybe the hands come in slightly closer. Find that block and right where the sacrum is, the tailbone, that's where you place this, all right? Not on the lower back, not too far up the spine, and not too far down. So make sure maybe right at the top of, you know, the crack of the two cheeks, sometimes people say, and then exhale. Make sure you feel fully supported here as you drop that tailbone and feel completely supported by your block. And you can be on the lowest level of the block, Everyone's different. You can come up to the mid-level, and you might even find that you're super flexible in the lower back, and you'll come up. If you come up to the highest level, use two blocks so that you're fully supported in the sacrum region. All right, and again, you should, you should be feeling, and obviously with me, you'll see a really deep curve of the lower back, Really nice opening of the front of the body. Good stretch here, opening up through the hip flexors, through the quads. All right, you should be feeling um, completely open, but again, if you need to come down, if you're feeling too much pressure on your cervical spine, your neck, uh, then maybe come down a, a notch, all right? Or you can use just a blanket. Maybe just a little blanket rolled up underneath the sacrum is enough for you today. So remember, each day can be so different to the body. You may be more flexible one week than another. So just listen and notice. Deep breath in and exhale. Adjust and maybe bring the right leg out. Know how the lower back is feeling. Listen to it, the subtle changes of this movement really opening up more through the quadriceps. If you're feeling okay, then maybe bring the left leg down, down. If not, maybe bend that right knee and stay in a supported bridge with those knees bent. Otherwise, extending into what's called pontoon. And the arms can be out into a T, fully relaxed. You can bring goal post or goddess arms. You will feel a slight constriction of the breath, a bit like ujjayi, except the tongue isn't doing the action anymore. It's the um, shape and position of the shoulders to the neck. Breathe effortlessly. If not, then back off, come down. About one more minute. Anytime you need to come out of a pose, please do, but use the breath, use the movements, listen to the body, each movement, each breath. Listen to that communication, to that subtle change. Accepting where you are. Finding joy, gratitude, peace with every moment, every breath. Showing empathy to yourself. Slowly begin to bend the knees coming into supported bridge if you are in pontoon. Make 
make sure that the heels are directly underneath the knees so that when you lift, you have full support of the legs. Begin to engage those heels to the floor, to the mat. Begin to feel the knees hip width apart, pressing straight forward, engaging the quadriceps and the glutes as you lift up. Remove your blocks and slowly, one vertebrae at a time, begin to drop the thoracic spine, reaching the lower lumbar, belly button pressing down, reaching the sacrum, lifting the belly up, feel that curve of your lower back, back down, sacrum is up, sacrum comes down as the belly comes up. Breathe, gently move knees side to side. Bring the knees in, gently massaging the lower back now. Gentle counter pose here. Slowly. And we're going to wrap the hands around your shins. And again, it might be you touch your fingers or maybe your wrists. Maybe the forearms. Maybe you can come around, reach for the elbows, and squeeze. Pressing slowly the sacrum to the floor. Straightening that spine. And releasing slowly, grabbing onto your knees or your shin. Coming forward, back and forth with the knees, and then side to side. Maybe even a rotation in a circle, reverse it. Coming around, deep breath in, extend the legs up, reaching up, bring the right leg down, pressing the right calf to the floor. This is where you might want a strap, as we're going to do some twists on the floor. So your left leg is up, we're going to bring that left leg down. Again, you can use a strap and hold that leg up. So if a strap is necessary for you, use that strap. Bring it in. Pressing that right calf to the floor and really bring that left leg in. Feel the stretch through the hamstring. Then we're going to bring it out. Nice opener here again. Stretching last time through that inner groin, through the quadricep and the hamstring. Press the toes towards you. Lifting up slowly, switching hands and coming over. Your both shoulder blades are on the floor. The left hip is lifted off the floor. Right leg is relaxed onto the mat and the left leg is extended out. You can use the strap if you have one to bring that leg up. Feel a gentle stretch through the hamstring maybe through the lower back. Inhale. And exhale, relax the shoulder blades to the floor. Slowly lift up, deep breath in, reaching up with the heel, press that knee in, left knee in, extend all the way down, bring that right knee in, squeeze it in, and lift up that right foot. Again, you can use a strap, you don't necessarily have to, you can use your hand and just hold underneath the thigh or even the calf muscle. Maybe you have really long arms and you can reach for the toes and you can straighten that leg out nice. But the left leg, think of the left leg, left calf is pressing to the mat. Nice and strong leg, core is engaged. Breathe and stretch that hamstring. Right hand holding onto the leg and bring it out to the side. Try and keep that left calf, left hip to the floor reaching out. You can always use a block if you don't reach the floor and just rest it on the block. Otherwise, you can 
can bring it to the floor maybe one day. Deep breath in, lifting up, switching hands. And we're gonna cross over. Your right hip is going to lift, but the right shoulder blade tries to stay onto the floor. Arm comes out to a T. Breathe. breath in, engage that left foot to the floor, lift up the right, gently press up, bring that knee in, squeeze, drop it down, extend the arms, reaching up, any last stretches before Shavasana, this is the time to do it, and otherwise, you know, if you're somewhere cold and you need to put on some socks or sweatshirt, maybe put that blanket on you and then come into your Shavasana. Feet are a few inches apart. Feet can drop, toes can drop to the side. Arms are down by the sides, maybe a few inches away from the hips. And palms are up. Shoulder blades coming in just slightly. Feel the shoulders dropping down. Think of me pressing on those shoulders, opening up the chest, and you're lifting the head away so that you have a nice long neck. Deep inhale, and exhale everything out the mouth. One more time, inhale, nice and deep. Cleansing breath out, everything you can, everything out of the lungs. the heart resting on the lungs, completely relaxed, pumping involuntarily, bringing that oxygen to the lungs, to, from the lungs all the way to every fiber muscle in your body, providing it, feeding it. Breath is a gift, a gift, if you will, of oxygen, a gift of life. A gift of purpose for every moment of every day.
then slowly roll over onto one side. Using your arm underneath you for a breath or two as a pillow. And when you're ready, begin to bring your hands forward, rolling over and then slowly walking your torso up. The last thing up is your chin. Gently relaxing elbows by the sides. Inhaling, lifting the chin. I thank you for coming today and practicing with me. Allowing yourself to find gratitude with every moment. Every breath. Knowing how special each moment is and seeing all that is so amazing in that moment, wherever you're at. Be it in the forest, be it in your house, be it around a friend, around your family, be it a butterfly floating by. Having clean tap water. Thank you again for spending this time with me. I'm grateful for every moment I have with you. Whether you replay this or are live, I hope you have a wonderful day and know that you can make a difference. You. By thinking kind thoughts, speaking kind words, and doing kind things. The light in me sees and honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Hey, Linda. Glad you're watching. Take care, everyone. And yin next Wednesday, God willing. All right. Otherwise, chair yoga tomorrow at 2. Take care. Be good.